Despite being sent home too soon on season six of RuPaul's Drag Race, Vivacious and her all-seeing sidekick, Ornacia, have been on pretty much every season of the show since. Always a pioneer, Vivacious made her most recent guest appearance on Drag Race from the safety of her own home in New York City by doing a voiceover for Ornacia, who was guest judging on an improvised skit called The World's Worst Drag Queen. And naturally, Mother turned her sound clips into a single, Ornesha Reads, The Fundamental Mix, available on Apple Music. Today, Vivacious joins us from her home discotheque studio, Quarantina Dance Arena, to talk about season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race, how drag queens are surviving the pandemic, and why she's doing a DJ set live every day at 3 p.m. Eastern on her Instagram until the self-quarantine period is over, officially. Join us for this and all the hot tea, hot tea, all crrr. Religious conspiracy wingnuts claim coronavirus is a hoax, but eating pastel-colored Easter eggs causes homosexuality. And a Florida woman puts porn-stuffed Easter eggs in mailboxes. I'm Fausto Fernos. I'm Mark Fillion. And this is Feast of Fun. Feast of Fun is made possible because of fabulous people just like you. Thank you. Mother has arrived. She's reading the girls' tonoids. Mother has arrived. She's reading, she's reading. Mother has arrived. She's reading the girls' tonoids. Mother has arrived. We read it. It's fundamental. Mental. Supplemental. Elemental. Hello. Quarantina Dance Arena. How can I help you? <laughs> Mother! Is now DJing for your life. <laughs> Mother is prostituting online for her freaking life. Honey, you are working yourself to the bone trying to give the children life. Honey, uh, honey, I'm getting my uvula knocked out daily just trying to get this thing done. If you thought that Vivacious was going to crawl up and hide in some cave until the coronavirus pandemic would be gone, you were wrong. You're mistaken. No. You thought wrong, honey. Well, to be honest with you, the first um, three days... After um, President Trump listed the, um, the, the 14 countries that were going to be shut, those are the countries that I normally travel to for work. So for a sudden, I bitch had to literally go in and just start hitting return and send back the deposits. Oh, I would have kept those and deposits to be like, sorry, girl. <laughs> no, 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 because the deposits were mm -hmm. months in advance in good faith by them. Mm hmm. And an act of God, which is what Miss Corona is, made them go, girl, send that damn money back, bitch. We can't be booking your ass. So I had to return all of that and I had to wrap my head around everything. Mm -hmm. Do you not understand the definition of non-refundable deposit? <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. I understand you're a business person and you have to take care of the people that take care of you. Right. Mm -hmm. I got to say, it was so exciting once again seeing you on season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race, the search for more money. <laughs> the search for more money. Yes, that was lots of fun. You were kind of ahead of the curve, Vivacious, because your appearance on Drag Race this season was done from the safety of your home. And so you recorded all your audio moments as Ornacia and sent it to them. And then they had a, a basically a, a dummy of Ornacia. How dare you call Ornacia a dummy? <laughs> honey, she is a sentient being. She's all head. She's all head, honey. She's quite cerebral, you know. How's your Ornacia? <laughs> Haven't had much complaints yet. <laughs> no, honey, she's fine. So it was really great. And so now you've uh, managed to transform your audio clips into a new single. Ornesha reads for your life, mother. Yes. Shall we play a little bit of that? You want me to play it or you want no, to play I, it? I'll play it right now. You want me to play it? Okay, if you can find it. I mean, I have. if you had told me at a time to um, cue that bitch up, we yes, I would have. I 
Well, <laughs> we'll play, we're, we're going to pretend post, like uh, we'll edit it's it in. in post. Yeah, I want you to t- take take the vinyl, throw it on for us real quick, Vivacious, and let's let's hear a little bit about it. Do you mind spinning for us a little bit? Get, 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 nut butter, get those nut butter away from my face. Get, 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 get away from my face. Oh wow, that's really great! So you took all your 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 sayings from that episode and you put it into a dance track. Yes, I was um, asked to record a few things for um, for the show, which I then did. Yes, Mama. And then and you then, did it. Um, there you all go. Yes, I did it. <laughs> and so, what was your uh, feel, reaction to seeing yourself on television? It was fun. Yeah. If only they had paid the extra money to bring me instead oh. of just the head. Yeah, honey, you know? but it, had they done that, you would have exposed yourself to the Rona, honey. You got to stay safe, stay at home. That shit was taped last year. Shh, don't tell Corona the Rona was not even a wasn't even a dream yet. Corona wasn't even a, wasn't even a thought, honey. So for people who haven't seen the episode yet, spoiler alert, it was a challenge where they were sort of making fun of Camp Wanakiki. <laughs> by literally dressing three Girl Scouts in Camp Wanakiki pink and brown outfits, and they were trying to sell nut butter door to door. And your Ornacia said, Get these nut butters out nut of butters us. away from my face. <laughs> and Latrice Royale's like, um, I own that. I own 51% of that line. Where's my check for that? And they're all like, bitch, you got on AJ and the Queen. What else do you Here's want? Here's the track, people. Yes. <laughs> She's reading. She's reading. Get, 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 so what was your reaction to seeing yourself on te- uh, on television? I mean, your voice, at least. I was quite happy for it. Yeah. Hey, any appearance is a good appearance, as I say. Whether, you know, don't matter. Because, you know, when I when I first saw it and I saw the, the Camp Wanakiki shade thrown that way, I said, this season is going to be a little controversial. And I didn't realize how controversial it would be until Aiden Zane did Patricia Quint. <laughs> and, she, and she had some words. Well, from what I heard, Miss Patricia Quinn read Aiden up the block one oh, side and yeah. down the block the other side. She was she was mad. I grow weary of this world. When shall we return to Transylvania? Huh? She said, I did not respect. You have to do it in a British accent. I did not respect being described as an old cookie woman or being depicted as a washed up actress who's taken too many drugs. I wish Aiden had given me the common courtesy of a heads up and maybe I could have given him a few lines to say on the show. From my portrayal to making fun of Catherine Hepburn's neurological disorder, I find the show tasteless. You will discover that when the mood takes me, I can be quite generous. I ask for nothing, must. And you shall receive it in abundance. Yeah, well, you know. Get these drag queens out of my face. <laughs> in the words of Miss Ornatia, can worse be a three-way tie? Can worse be a three-way tie? <laughs> this team is the pits. Do you think this season of Snatch Game was probably one of the most poorly received of all seasons? To be honest. If you took all the clips leading up to Snatch Game that RuPaul, all the words came out of RuPaul's mouth. Everybody needs to take those words that she said, record them, and listen to them over and over. And that will actually give you an idea of how Snatch Game should be. Snatch Game is not a look. It is the ability to imbue and embody the character and take it with you on a day-to-day basis down the street and be able to 
quickly reply back to people in quick witticism of that character as though it was you. It's like being able to have everything thrown at you left and right, and you can reply back immediately. Until you've done that with your Snatch Game character, you have not studied your Snatch Game character at all. And you were ready to do uh, Grace Jones on your season of, uh, no, it was Miss Cleo. I was ready to do Miss Carmen out. That would be such a good one. Honey, I would have let them have it, darling. I would have let them have it. I would have lit them up. I have Call a- me now. <laughs> Yeah. Call me now, RuPaul. But see, if you were a psychic and they had to ask you the question and you didn't and you didn't have the question, like you didn't have the right answer that they did, then they would say you weren't a real psychic. Right. It's like, <laughs> I saw what you did there, Miss Thing. Don't try it with me. Miss RuPaul, <laughs> something tells me later on today, it looks like you're going to you're going to run into some troubles over there, darling. It seems as though you're going to spend about six hours trying to do your makeup while I'm going to try to do it in two. Now, was Miss Cleo alive still when you decided to do I her? I think she was at the time still alive, yes. Yeah, because she, she died recently. She came out as a lesbian, too. Yeah. Oh, did she? Yeah, she did. I like that pussy. Yes, I do, <laughs> m- woman. Not man. Woman. I... <laughs> so she was a lick a lot of puss. Oh, yes. A lot of vagina. All oh, right, honey. I should have saved a piece of carpet for her. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so the snatch game that they had this season it was uh uh i when i first saw uh, aiden zane do that i was just like oh this could be pretty good because like i really liked his look because patricia quinn's got that purple hair yeah you know but then it was just like he didn't know anything about her and then it was just a bunch of like ages stuff like i'm old i'm you know i forget everything and it's just kind of like you know when people become older they're just you know they're older but it doesn't mean that they're just fall apart completely so i thought it was kind of very ageist and so i texted peaches christ you know the drag queen because she's friends with uh patricia queen because she does a lot of um rocky horror stuff and so i was just like oh when you see this (laughs) you need to apologize to your friend on behalf of all drag queens all americans all fans (laughs) of rocky horror picture show because of this and she's just like what are you talking about i haven't seen anything yet oh You'll see it. And so <laughs> she just, she posted like a thing saying, you know, I know Patricia Quinn. She didn't mention Aiden Zane or anything, but she posted on her Facebook and just like, she's a wonderful person, brilliant, <laughs> funny, long career, like talking about how wonderful she is. And I, you know, and to me, it's a good response because it's just like, uh, you know, sure, this is a really crappy impersonation or tribute right. or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, there is a real person there and that person really is phenomenal. Uh, you know, is known mostly as a stage actress in the UK. Right. Mm -hmm. And as a pop culture legend, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race is about being awkward and clumsy and drag is not about perfection. It's it's about embracing your flaws. And, you know, the queen of flaws, (laughs) Jake Lee Caliente on Facebook was like, I don't see what the big deal with, you know, Aiden Zane's portrayal of Patricia Quinn. It's like, I mean, you know, most other uh, people who get impersonated on Drag Race, they're flattered by it. And everybody knows that that's not really them. It it did come across as kind of mean. I don't know. I'm a little torn about it. You know, part of me is like, if if RuPaul's Drag Race did impersonation on me and I've had, uh, you know, somebody actually impersonated me uh, was um, Trixie Mattel. It was a terrible job, too. But she did it. Yes, she did. And I was like begging her, please send it to me. Do it for me, please. And she wouldn't do it because she felt she she felt so bad right here. No, no, she did it at a club. Oh, she did. it. Yeah, that's why I heard. I heard about it after the fact. People are like, oh, my God, are you okay?" It's like Trixie came for you and blah, blah, blah. She did it. She did an impersonation of you. And I was like, one of the most famous, amazing drag queens in the world did impersonation of me said my name on the stage, I think is a really amazing thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, maybe it was mean or whatever, but I don't really care. I, I don't take it personally if, when people say things like that, especially the check comes in. In this case, there is no check, honey. It's more like a negative check. Do you think Patricia Quinn might have taken it a little bit too personally? What do you make of Patricia Quinn's reaction? So Aiden was supposed to have drawn from characters of yeah. what, of what her accomplishments were and Aiden did not do that. She tried to make it sound as though, well, I know her personally. 
That was weird. Well, you've now gone to the personal side, not the caricature of what she's played. Mm -hmm. And then you are now trying to represent what you think you know of her personally. And you've literally just smeared her, who her physical reputation is. Yes, at that point, I'd be trying to come for your neck, your eyeballs and everything else. Well, she also said she's like, he's a liar. I don't know who this person is. They probably met at some convention somewhere and she was probably sitting there having like something to eat or he was eating and people were around or, you know what I mean? Right. And she went, who? What? Aiden? Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Hi. Right, nice to meet you. Bye. Next. Right. Which is, you know, it's super unfortunate because like he had such charm and was is really kooky and I really liked his drag sensibility. And the girls really, I, I it may have just been added to that way because they can do a lot with editing, but it really seemed like they all kind of came down on him pretty hard. Whereas if I met like a queen who was like from this small town in Georgia and was just like, I'd be like, that is so cool that you're in bumfuck Egypt and you're doing drag and you're on Drag Race. That's awesome. Let's see what you can do. Oh, you're going to do that? Oh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> From the time Aiden walked into the room, they looked at her and said, oh, she's the weird one. She's the weird mm. one. And mm -hmm. they kept gunning for her from that point forward. I am so happy that she did not go home first, second, or third. And I'm glad that it ruffled other queens' feathers who were still in that competition, trying to figure out, out why is she safe and I'm in the bottom. You know, mm -hmm. so I was happy that Aiden, congratulations. You did not go home when they had expected you to, and you persevered. Keep it up, girl. Now try to figure out what to do with your career after, after COVID-19. No shit, right? You know, that's the thing about it is like, I feel really bad for a lot of the drag queens from season 12 because I think VH1 and their management keep them under wraps a lot. And in normally... It makes sense because they're traveling and seeing the world and, you know, and, and right now, like everything about their public appearance is being controlled by a company where no one's showing up to the office to work. Like if you go to any kind of television production studio, they're empty because of the coronavirus pandemic. A lot of these drag queens on season 12, not only do they not have gigs, they're not doing hardly anything online unless it's happening as part of some of, uh, official event, you know? And usually, like, drag queens are meeting the fans, they're taking selfies. They're touring, they're collecting up uh, $10,000 checks for appearances. They're, they're you know, doing uh, podcasts, they're doing videos. They're almost, like, invisible right now. And I feel really bad for them because, you know, they've put in so much money into their season that I don't know if they're going to, any of them are going to get it back. That is true, but I also believe that once we get to the other side of this, whether it takes a few more months, I believe the machine of RuPaul's Drag Race will do everything in its power to make sure these girls get what they need to get done. And I know that for a fact that the clubs are also going to do the same thing yeah. to make it right by, the, by those girls and the fan base. Do you think the public will be a little bit nervous about being crowded into a bar to see the season 12 girls perform? It's not going to happen within the first three months after the quarantine is lifted. It's going to happen the three months after that. Yeah, you're right. They're going to be okay. The good news is, though, this will keep those ladies in work for some time moving forward because all these clubs are now going to want to have, are now going to be trying to get a piece of those girls over and over and over and hopefully it'll work out in their best advantage maybe on the other hand rupaul's celebrity drag race is coming up at the end of the month premiering on the 24th which is on friday and i could see a lot of people were like why should i have this you know person from season 12 come in and be like i could have this d-list celebrity for the same price uh, 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 mark it's yes. a secret celebrity oh, drag secret race. celebrity drag race yes it's a secret mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a knockoff of that masked singer. Is that what it is? Like, we're not going to know who the celebrity is when they see when we see them in drag. Oh, so it'll be something like that, you know, so they'll be will be like, oh, gee, I'd never realized Adam Lambert was such a pretty lady. As long as it's not Sarah Palin <laughs> rapping. Oh, bitch. <laughs> Well, uh, you, but who you do you know, think, who, who do you think, you know, you know, RuPaul's posse, celebrity posse. No, I don't. We know uh, Latoya Jackson's going to make an appearance. 
Um, I think I'm going to be like everybody else and just watch it like a virgin on the first time at mm. prom night. Do you feel like they will have um, trans women or, or uh, ab fab women on the show? Do you think they'll have uh, women assigned female at birth? birth? Yes. I have no clue. I'm just going to watch it with open eyes on the first night and see. I'm hoping that maybe this can address some of those issues. But if not, then the fans will then use that to have their pound of flesh to go and try to then social warrior and warrior and for what they think the show has done egregiously to them. Mm. We'll see how things turn out once the show starts. I got the the trailer on YouTube and I went frame by frame looking at the shots of the entertainers that they had. And I noticed that one entertainer was somebody in a white tank top oh, with rounded shit. shoulders. So based on that single image, I'm guessing a drag king oh, is definitely going to be finally, making. finally. So now all those drag kings can shut up because now we <laughs> finally have a celebrity. Oh, no, honey. That's, the war is just starting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gonna- oh, no, no, no. It's going to continue. You know, it's like and, and that's that Pandora box, not the drag queen. The box of mischief yes. is going to be just opening. She's creaking it open, honey. She's causing a commotion as Madonna did. As Gigi Good did. <laughs> we, we, we shall see, darling. We shall see. Mm-hmm. Gigi Good. It looks like she's going to be season 12's winner. I mean, it's hard to see any other drag queen uh, upstaging her at this Well, point. Sherry Pie could have, but we I all... Think, I think Gigi, Good, Gigi Good's um, biggest competition is Sherry Pie, but she's being edited out the show, and she's also disqualified. So, Gigi Good, darling, if you do happen to win, Snatch up those coins and don't look back. Don't look at it as, as a negative at all. I'll just go, bitch, yes, the coins are mine. Has all those coin tatas. I feel like uh, like uh, this week they showed Sherry Pie do the runway, like she walked the runway. But I feel like last week they didn't have her do it. Was that right? Are they editing her out? I think of the our run- brains are like erasing it. No, 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 Every time when it comes to the end of the episode, they always show the runway section because it depends on who is in the top and the bottom. So they have to be fair and still put her on. But they do edit her for everything else leading up until the runway. She's always there at the end. Gigi Good's Madonna's Open Your Heart look was really spectacular. And she looked like an El Greco painting it was all stretched out, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. One, of the, uh, one of the things that I like about Gigi is she walks into the show. She goes, well, I'm just a look queen. And she's using that as her Please only think of me as that while I pull out all the stunts that I have in my bag of tricks and snatch up everything from you little idiots that keep <laughs> running around and going, that keeps running around and going, I'm theater trained. I'm a theater student. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm the musical. queen of New theater. York. <laughs> Girl, have a, have a seat, Becky. Go in the back. So uh, what are New York drag queens uh, reacting to Britta Filters? uh, You know, every other episode, she's talking about how she won the Drag Queen of New York Award. Well, um, you know, I don't pay any attention to it. I'm going to say for the record, Britta is a friend of mine. And so I'm not here to sit there and bash her in any way, shape or form. Not happening. Not getting that pound of flesh from me. Um, well, tell us your side. I, like, who is Britta? Because, you know, we all listen. People people talk about reality TV. Should they say like because uh, they understand, like, you know, there's a lot of editing going on so they can frame people. That and, was and, my edit. It? That was my edit, darling. She said what she said, what she said, what she said, what she did. Yeah. You know, um, I think what it is, is this. Sometimes when you get on the show, you get so caught up in your headspace. And I think that's what happened to Britta. She got caught up in her headspace. And, you know, these were the words coming out of her mouth, trying to find justification for who she is or what her credentials might be in that sense, you know. Mm. And there it is. I mean, I never went on that show and said, well, I'm a New York queen. I expect, you know, X, Y, and Z. 
Neither has any other single New York queen in that sense. Mm. You know, but that might, it's just maybe that's the quirkiness of how her brain responds to things. Mm. I think she couldn't grasp the fact that she wasn't good enough to win those challenges. And it was really setting her off that here comes somebody that she considers a, 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 an inferior mm-hmm. doing the job. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like part of drag too, isn't it? Where it's kind of you, you feel your own fantasy, you create this own illusion for yourself. And it's hard, it's hard for you to like have that illusion sometimes popped, right? Yes. When you have the narciss- the narcissism of your illusion snatched, snatched away from, from the jaws of your life and, and, and shattered, you know, mm-hmm. all that's left is, is a sputtering, um, facsimile trying to pull itself back together Mm. and that's what we saw i saw somebody like a lot of shady people today were sharing uh an article on how to recycle a brita filter (laughs) (laughs) dry the filter by shaking off excess water and setting in a dry place for at least three days wrap the filter in a plastic grocery bag which will be recycled and then send it to (laughs) terracycle Oh, that is so mean. I <laughs> know, isn't it? And, so, and send it to where? Oh, it's like you could send it to a place and they'll recycle it for you. Oh. I don't understand I why it's... Jan Sport had to change her name to Jan, which is a brand, but Brita Filter, which is also a brand, had, kept, was able to keep it. I think because Brita has already reached out to that company and they've already decided to do stuff with her. Mm. Really? Is she like an unofficial spokeslady for Brita Water? I think something to to that effect is honey, in the works. From yes. her appearance on Drag Race, she was thirsty <laughs> <laughs> for some filtered water. <laughs> yeah, for some. Yes, I think there is something in the works with her. There's something that I don't understand because a lot of the humor of RuPaul's Drag Race is corny. I don't remember having corn. It's very campy. It's campy or corny. It's silly and ridiculous. And Rockham Sakura doing all these fart jokes, and then later on she's being criticized for them. And I'm just like, uh, look at yourself. This is drag race, honey. Listen, when the show wants to find a way to make sure that you are the one that gets in the bottom to eliminate so that it works in the elimination yeah. dogma or scheme of things, they will use the thing. They will use whatever it takes to point that towards you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Rockham ended up being in that section. Like, look at this week's episode. I mean, seriously, Jaden, she was quite well as a sex kitten playing the role for that Madonna, mm-hmm. but they made her safe instead. I thought she was possibly going to win or something like that or be in the top also, but they sent her to go sit down in the back. Mm-hmm. And so you could see that In a sense, when you looked at the highs and the lows, it was scheduled that we're going to try to use Miss Heidi in the closet to take up Miss Britta and Mm -hmm. send her home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there we have it. I I would say the uh, if she doesn't, you know, she's definitely going to win Miss Congeniality is Heidi in the closet. I hope Heidi can at least last a few more episodes, like maybe around three more. Uh And I'd be happy with her outcome because I believe that she is the fun soundbite that America needs right now, as opposed to a lot of the other queens that are there. There's a sweetness to her and there's a gentleness and a humor. Yes. And she's, you know, she has that spirit that's really a fun, it's infectious. Not like coronavirus infectious, but you guys know what I mean. (laughs) So what what do you think of of which? Yeah. I'm, I know that you all probably saw articles or pictures running around with them trying to refer to me as coronavirus. I told you how my looks were killing. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I brought killer looks to the damn show. Don't mess with me. And there's no inoculation against vivacious. There is nothing, darling. I will even give you a second and a third infection. Don't mess with me, honey. <laughs> Lethal, honey. I will take the title lung, the title volume out your lungs, honey. Oh, so Gigi Good did really well. Jan was like, "I'm going to open the show. I'm going to do wonderful." They praised her, and then as, <laughs> and then <laughs> as they announced that like Gigi Good's the winner, it was just like this. You could just he- like the the 
the uh, the look on Jan's face that you just wanted to hear this music I, from, from Kill Bill. I think. If, <laughs> okay, y'all are shady for doing that one. I think if, if John could have. If John, John could have pulled off all the, um, <laughs> if John could have pulled off all the energy from the exorcist or Carrie, mm-hmm. honey, she would have thrown RuPaul in the motherfucking rafters with a, with a razor slashing her to a billion pieces because <laughs> John looked livid. Oh, if yeah. John had the powers of the Dark Phoenix, honey, everybody in the production crew would have been dead <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Fresh bitch wanted to kill everybody in the room. That look on her face was full on psychotic. How dare you? Well, and especially because that Britta like kind of reading, she's like, Jen went to a very expensive performance school, you know. <laughs> Whereas, you know, I don't know what kind of schooling Ju- uh, Gigi had, but you know, Gigi's got the advantage that her, she was raised by a mother who's very understanding. He's got a gay uncle who we know from one of our favorite bars here in town, Big Chicks, uh, Stuart, and uh, you know, and the costumes are all there. But she, you know, she's got the performance down too, and just you know, RuPaul, she RuPaul loves a skinny I, bitch. I, I think what it is is this: when you have like, for instance, the reason why Trinity K. Bonet is so good at drag is because when Trinity was 12, her mother used to take her to drag competitions. When you have a family that supports you from that young in mm-hmm. something like this, you're going to excel quite well doing it when you get to a legal age. And that's why Gigi Good is so good at what she does, because Gigi's family allowed her to grow in she wanted to follow all the aspects of drag to become this persona and she did it. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, maybe we, we might think of uh, Gigi good as like, you know, lavish or independently wealthy or whatever, but you know, from at least hearing her story and we know Stuart, this is a, a family of modest means. It's not like they're just swimming in money. Well, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know their financial situation, right? But, you know, when you make your own clothes and you make your own costumes, it's like, you can tell like, it's like you can really just do so much more on a budget if you just have that imagination. When you have the love and support of your parents from that young age to say that you can do this, it makes you a stronger person as that queen who can open up all access in the universe and invite it into their bodies to be quite successful at it. And that is Gigi Good. Mm-hmm. Gigi was like nine years old when Drag Race started. Yes. But the bitch also didn't know who Patti LuPone was. That's <laughs> no, okay. you can't know everything. You can't know everything, but. Stop! Stop taking pictures right now! You heard the announcements? Who do you think you are? You know, this season of RuPaul's Drag Race, everyone's asking, like, who is? Crystal Method is asking, who the fuck is Elda Barge? RuPaul's asking, who the fuck is Poppy? New York's saying, who the fuck is Britta? And then Patricia Quinn is like, who the fuck is Aiden Zane? And then Madonna and her home, she's saying, who the fuck is Michelle Visage? <laughs> All these questions. <laughs> who is the season? Yes. Who is? Well, you know, the answer to all that is just listen to the Feast of Fun podcast because all these people have been guests on the show, except for Aiden Zane. Yeah. Or the, Britta. Or the Statue of Liberty. Or Poppy. Or Madonna. Someday. I am the worst person when it comes to drag and what should be the references are because to me, that doesn't mean shit to me in my life. I did drag because I saw a trans fierce performer do it and I wanted to be as fierce as that trans performer. It has nothing to do with who these camp people are in my life. I wasn't impressed by any of that. However, my best friend, he knows all the references of camp and what makes up the lingo of all of that stuff. But it's not my cup of tea. I wasn't raised to follow all of that stuff. My background is in, is in religion and science. And karate. And karate. And the only thing I watch in, in life is martial arts movies. If it has anything to do with some, some, something campy, Bitch, I'm fucking part Klingon. I don't believe in that shit. Born a warrior, die a warrior. Exactly. Today is a good day to die. That's the code of the Klingons. Now pass me my back left as I do runway down the down the runway. You know, that's 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 how 
that's how we do things. You know, it's like not everyone is going to know their drag lingo and all of that stuff. It is not a necessity in my life. But if I don't know it, I will back up and acquiesce and let it pass on to the next person who knows it. Now, who who do you feel like has been the hardest person to see go home so far? I didn't want Rock'em Sock'em to go yet because yeah. I like because I always like queens that are like myself to go further in the show because we are a niche style. Um, and, you know, every time we walk in with a different, the show likes to only tries to celebrate an, a feminine look. Anything that's outside that look, there is some form of snide criticism towards it in some way, shape or form. Yes, over the years, they have given crowns to different girls, etc., of different genres, but it's only done to try to show that drag does come in different shapes or form. But at the end of the day, the only form that they truly try to celebrate from the drag race show is the feminine form. Uh, case in point, season 11 just happened. Well, if you look at most of the red carpets that were done before COVID, the only people who were brought to those red carpets was either Plastic Tiara, Anina West, or um, or Brooklyn Heights. Mm -hmm. They completely bypassed the other top three people from that season as though they didn't even exist. Mm. Just saying. Well, part of it is, because too, is like with now with so many famous drag queens out in action and it's it's you know, if you're on RuPaul's Drag Race, it doesn't have the same impact that it used to have. And so you have to sort of be more aggressive in getting all the media appearances you can. Hello. Feast of fun. <laughs> and, um, you know, just getting your name out there. You know, it's like if you're if you're going to sit back and wait for the gigs and the interviews to come in and you're not that making them happen. happen you have to get up yeah. and go get it your damn self. And, and a part of me is like, I, I feel really bad for these drag queens because it is in some ways they're it's just so hard to go through. And and when they are being sent home, you know, like. I think seeing Rockham Sakura, I think I've even seen like Brita Filter being sent home. It it broke my heart a little bit, even though like I wasn't too crazy about Britta her. Will, Britta yeah. will survive from the, the rumor has it is she has a good manager by the name of Vincent who has his hands in many, many big, big projects in New York City. So he will know how to navigate and get her into all of those things. I hope so. But, you know, part of it is like we know you and I know how um, confusing or misinforming uh, this circumstances can be. And people put all kinds of lies in your ears and tells you all kinds of shit that ain't true and try to make you sign contracts that aren't in your benefit and try to lock you into <laughs> shitty gigs. And, and, you know, and it's, it's a, it's a treacherous place to be. And, and a lot of drag Queens, um, their dreams come true to be on Drag Race, but then they're still like, it just opens up a whole Pandora box of problems, you know? And so when seeing Britta, seeing Rock'em Sakura being sent home, to me, it was really heartbreaking in a lot of ways because it was like, yeah, these are people who, who are struggling, who have dreams, who have a lot of talent, who have a lot of offer in the world. And, you know, in a lot of ways, like the real Drag Race begins when you get sent home, isn't it? That is true, yes, um, mm -hmm. because um, if you are in a niche type of a role or, in most cases, if you are black, it's very hard for a bitch to get a job. These places, they'll bypass a black queen just to go give it to a white queen who left early. You know, so, yes, it's hard to um, find jobs and pick up jobs, but also you also need to figure out what are you good at and how to find the market that will best work for you. And you got to get up and go, you got to be a, you have to be a go-getter. You can't wait for the work to come in. You have to be out there pounding the pavement, trying to get it done. So yes, it's, you know, yes, at that point, once you leave the show, the true race begins, but it's up to you how you wield the sword. 
You know, uh, somebody who's been uh, really shining on that as kind of an unsung hero, unhung hero on uh, YouTube is Pearl, the drag queen, does these hilarious videos as Roxanne, this plastic surgery, big lipped character that are, I don't know if you guys have yes. catched it. It's really good. It's one of the funniest things on YouTube. But you also have to remember that Pearl also excels at being a makeup artist. And so she knows exactly what her strengths are, just like how Miss Fame knew that her strength is not a performance. It relies on her being around makeup and her being around fashionistas. Look how fiercely Miss Fame is doing for herself. She took a show that, you know, was is based on drag queens performing and says, I'm going to take this into the real world and go hand it right into the faces of the Anna Wintours of the planet. And Miss Fame is making quite a smashing success for herself. She has out her own makeup palette. It's her second, you know, I think if we had, um, if DragCon did not cancel this year, Miss Fame would have come out with her third palette. Yeah, and for, for a lot of drag queens that are coming out with uh, makeup collections uh, that, that seem to be selling very well. And usually the, uh, the market for that is uh, usually women in their 30s and 40s. The exuberance of... An individual makeup artist, as compared to a Lancome, a Laura Mercier, etc., I think people can feel as though they can identify because when those individuals speak and do, think about this. Have you ever seen somebody from Laura Mercier doing a makeup? They look boring as hell. Meanwhile, you have a person like Trixie Mattel or Alyssa Edwards or a Jeffree Star doing a makeup thing or, um, you know, or, or a recent faces trans um, sister that just recently was forced to come out. When they do makeup, it feels as though that they are talking to you directly and she is your best friend. Yeah. Anyone that does makeup can appreciate that. I mean, you know, um, I was never a, a, a fan of um, that child who does um, makeup from Morph Cosmetics, but I saw one of his videos and I was very touched by it in terms of his ability to um, show you by what he was doing. And I went out and started to apply that style to a few of my looks. And I loved it. Hey, so you're DJing at 3 p.m. Eastern time every single day until the pandemic ends, which may be never. Yes. Every yes. single day you're DJing for an hour on Instagram. I actually DJ for four hours every day. Oh my God. I, I always thought it was just an hour. Oh, darling, that's rude and disrespectful to people. No, I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, I'll tell you why. So what it is, is this. I believe that we are going to be here for a while because think about this. Even if one physical state gets cured and flattens the curve, for that state to properly function, you would have to close all its borders and seal it like a Petri dish mm -hmm. for them to keep that up. The minute that other, country, other um, states are coming through, you've now increased the bubble again in terms of isolation. And so since too many Americans are too entitled and do not really also not believe that this is real, this is going to be something that keeps extending until it kills out the, the wrong Darwinian idiots who don't believe that this is happening. In the process, social distancing and social isolationism is also going to increase depression in a lot of people because they are not used to this new way of, of a mindset and a shift in conscious. And so I believe that by bringing music to them, this can help many, many people get out of the funk of, oh my God, I'm trapped between my living room, my dining room, the one bedroom apartment that I'm in, and this is my only place of escapism. So my job is, since we can't go out and play, I'm going to bring the music in to brighten your day. So, so that you're playing music that's upbeat or inspiring or energizing. You're, you're not like playing like da 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 da. <laughs> A funeral dirge. 
we start playing we started uh, i started dj at 3 p.m eastern standard time daylight saving time and i go until seven each day i spin a different genre of music to make sure that when you show up, you don't feel as though you're listening to the same thing over and over. Wow. Because if you're listening to the same thing over and over, you're also not growing mentally as a human being. So the first day that I started was a Wednesday. So I decided that I was going to do top 40, which is what, which is music that, you know, that the, the young drag race crowd would understand and cater to. And um, I did then did pop 40 the day after that, which is, all the top pop music, everybody dance now, all of that stuff. Clap your hands. You know, um, Robin X and all of that. Crystal Water, she's homeless. And then Friday, I decided, you know what? What would come after pop and pop and top and um, top 40s? Mm -hmm. Let's do Friday as, think about it. Friday is a major dance night of the week. Yeah. So Friday, I'm like, I'm going to do big room vocal house. That is Pride edition style, as in the big room vocal house that you would hear if you went to a Pride event, not in a drag bar, but in a real club. So that's what I do on Fridays. And on Saturdays, I decide to do house music. House music is the basis of where our LGBT roots come from. So well, it's on, like on a, Saturday, a trip through music history. Just go to house. From primal screams to the sounds of the future. And then on Sunday, which is supposed to be the Lord's Day, I then decide I'm going to take all these kids and bring them to church. So on Sunday, I do Gospel House, which is actually, the music is actually more fun to listen to than the house. Because when you realize that a lot of this music was also written by LGBT people that created a lot of Gospel House. And the reason how that came about was because back in the day, a lot of gays, we were out going out to clubs. We went out clubbing so much that we didn't show up to church on Sunday. So we decided, well, since we can't go to church on Sunday, let's make some of the music ch sound churchy. So are you playing like Shirley Caesar? Like, you know, beans, oh, greens, potatoes. And, um, <laughs> You're actually, insulting actually, my vicious um, too. Or like a little Barbara Thomas Reddick. If God don't do it, it won't, won't get, get done. done. If God, God don't do, do it, it, it won't, won't get, get done. done. It's going to take a miracle. Oh, that's what you say when you, you, you don't want to do something. Somebody's asking you to do something or it needs to get done. And you're like, God doesn't do it. It won't get done because I sure <laughs> as hell aren't going to do it. Well, you know what? You just asked me about um about some, some, some if, if do I do a little, um you know, Shirley Caesar? Yeah. Well, let me let me give you a little bit of how a gospel version of that would actually um would actually sound. This is Shirley Caesar taken into a house mix. You know, you are taking us to church. Yes, I'm taking you to church, but this is the con church, honey. Not the church that make you feel depressed about being an LGBT person. This is the church that will uplift you. And I use that Sunday to do um, gospel music to help like use it as a cleansing to get you into the rest of the week. And so on Mondays, I do freestyle classics. I you like name this. the track Liz Lizette Melendez, Niobe, TKA, George Lamont, Tony Moran, Coro, all of them. Sapphire, bring, give me back my heart. I hear whispers at night. I throw all the all the um, freestyle classics to you on on um, on Mondays, and on Tuesday we disco. And then on Wednesdays you play the uh, dancing hamster. Here we go. And 
and on Wednesday you get you get some baby shark. I'm joking. I don't I don't touch baby shark. <laughs> but I give you seven days of variety of music so that every time you come to the station you don't feel as though you're bored. But also the whole time that I'm doing it, I'm doing motivational speeches to everyone, and I acknowledge every single person that logs into the page and call them by their name and speak to them because I believe that in a time when we are trapped in a house, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we do not let this whole you know, people get up every day and they watch the news about Corona, this death, this death, 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 death. The only thing that all of that can do to you is put you in a negative mind space, which might either make you suicidal, which might make you depressed, which might put you in a bubble or put you in a spiral of isolationism and more introvertism. So the whole idea is by addressing this through music, and try to motivate people to get up. It's like this is your this is your exercise time for the day. I want you to get up and find an exercise that you want to do, whether it's washing the dishes, whether it's you dancing your ass off. But what by what by moving and enjoying this music, what's gonna happen is it's going to shift the endorphins in your head and the dopamine and serotonin levels around and put you in a more positive place so that you can get through this whole concept of social isolationism. Now, uh, what are you doing for Easter? Easter is Sunday, which is, to, which is today, right? That's right, right, baby. Happy Easter. It's also the anniversary of Mark and I meeting each other. That's right. Well, guess what? Remember, so if Easter lands on a Sunday, I'm doing Gospel House. So by me spinning Gospel House, it's kind of like me blessing their Easter. Hello. So everything falls in line. The universe has already given me everything that I need at that point. Mark and I met each other on Easter only instead of uh, hiding eggs. <laughs> we found them. These bitches were at a bat. They found love in them. a bad house. <laughs> <laughs> we, I went up to Mark at a bar, a sleazy bar, and I said, don't I know you from the internet? And he said, what internet? What are you talking about? Of course, this was like 20 years ago. I said, I I've been chatting with somebody who's using your photo on AOL. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, like, <laughs> I got a photo of my house. Let me take you home and I'll show you. He lived right around the corner. So it was an easy walk. So Mark and brought him around cute. the corner and, and showed him everything below, below, below the belt, the belt buckle, and and they've been together ever and since. And above too, below and above. But you know, when I walked into the place <laughs> and I saw like the wigs and the weird outfits and the costumes, I was just like, Oh my! God. Okay, in for penny, in, <laughs> in for, for pound. pound. I'm and, here already, and, and the he's kind of cute. And the rest is herstory, as Daphne Dumont was born. Mm. I thought her name was Faustina. Not me, Mark. Mark in drag is is hilarious. In oh, fact, Lord. we have a cookie with drag queens. That's all of us are in drag together. That's coming. Soon. And I think I probably look my best. You know, uh, and th this is what kills me. I had this amazing outfit for your video, and the day we were filming, the zipper on the dress broke. So I had to use my B dress, oh. which is this lady bunny. You know. You know, and Lady Bunny still look good. It's cute, but it's not as cute as you know as it was as I was planning. You know, I, I right. look like some East Berlin hooker from the 1980s. You know, right? One of the ones, uh, the Freulein who would kill you right before um, she finds out you're a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have you you've been to uh, uh, to Germany, right? You've been to Berlin. I know I've been to a different part of um, Germany. Um, I don't remember off the back of my hand. Or Amsterdam, you've been to Amsterdam, right? But the German, no, so the ge German sex workers, they wear wear all kinds of outrageous outfits. Uh, I've heard in RuPaul back in early, early interviews of her that she, she, vaginal cream Davis, and me, and a few other people like are obsessed with them. And it's part of it is like in the '90s they wore like big crazy hair and these knee high boots, and the sex workers in Eastern and you know Central Europe influence drag a lot more than we realized that is true yes because um drag back then i think we were more into like the the s m look mm -hmm. and we felt as though that that was like what helped identify you know because i remember i'm looking at the early drags around me and a lot of it was very s m influenced the fall of the berlin wall allowed a lot of westerners to travel into central and eastern europe and they saw these like really glamorous sex workers dressed up to the nines with this crazy 
aesthetics, you know, these wild aesthetics with big hair and, and just these colorful clothes and patterns. And I think that influenced the world of drag more than we realize. I would say so, yes. So um, on the internet, the, this conspiracy is going around. Right-wingers cannot decide whether the coronavirus is a hoax or that the 5G cellular network is causing the coronavirus pandemic. But the, this, is, this is another um, uh, um, misinformation, this uh, fake news that's being passed around, saying that eating Easter eggs that have been dyed with lavender or pink or pastel colors will make you gay. <laughs> I should hope so. I think Snopes investigated that and said, it, you know, that started off on some kind of parody site, but then some kind of Christians uh, picked it up and they really ran with it thinking it was the truth. So Snopes investigated and it came back as false. Well, you know, you, you, can't, you can't teach stupid mm. the truth. Well, well, how I, many eggs I have loved, you eaten? I loved decorating eggs as a kid, didn't you? I was not a part of that because in, in my religious background, that is considered part of um, paganism. So we oh. don't partake in stuff like that. Oh, I'm so no. sorry. So did you get an Easter basket with little chocolate bunnies and a chocolate Jesus in it or no? It does not celebrate Jesus. So there's no need to be doing any of that. No. Well, you, you guys do it. have a wonderful tradition in Jamaica of the Easter bun. And right. on our Patreon.com slash Feast of Fun, Mark's going to be posting... The recipe for the Easter oh, bun uh, that you just successfully made. One I made today. one today. You even burnt sugar for it. I, I, I made the browning for it. And you got like hops and or you got the special malt I beer. Got stout beer. It's stout. made of stout beer. It's delicious. It's good. You know, it's good. It's a different flavor from the, the commercial one. Last year when you were in town, we had some commercial Easter uh, bun, Jamaican Easter bun. Which was, which was so good, by the it way. Good. Oh, so good. Do you are you supposed to eat it with like cream cheese or like a heart like a, a soft it's, cheese it's, on top? It's, it's a it's a it's a Jamaican cheese uh, um, that that we normally have it with. And what 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 would you describe that cheese to people who are not familiar with it? Is it's it a hard like, cheese. It's is not it more a cream like cheese. a uh, is it more like a sharp cheddar? Is it a? It's slightly sharp, so it um, once 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 consumed together, it creates a different um, taste in the mouth. That's actually quite cool. Oh, that sounds lovely. It actually pulls the sweet out of the bun and neutralizes it. My father used to have a guava paste and some type of saltines. Uh, and, no, and, and cheese. White cheese. And yeah. a type of white cheese when we were kids. And this is very similar to that because the guava is, is a very intense sweetness, mm -hmm. but it's also a very um, tart sweetness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the uh, Jamaican Easter bun has a lot of that quality with the preserved fruits in it. Now, I made I made one today, but uh, traditionally, I guess they usually make it on Thursdays because you don't cook on Good Friday because, you know, it's the day of. And so, you, so the, on Good Friday, you're just kind of eating this stuff. And But what day eat, is it right now? We don't Easter. know. Well, it's Easter because it's quarantine. Are you sure? <laughs> Calendar. It's like, you know, if it wasn't for our cell phones or our computers, we wouldn't know what day it is. There's a woman in Florida who takes Easter eggs a little bit to the extreme. So she took the plastic Easter eggs and she put porn inside them. And then she left them in people's mailboxes. And I guess she did this for a couple of days in a row. And so the police, you know, police caught her because they were like, who the, why are you doing this? And so they charged her with uh, 11 counts of obscenity oh my and God. Uh, for driving without a license. Or suspended license. Interesting. So, Vivacious, what, what's the rest of your week look like? Besides uh, just DJing every day. Before my season, I was trying to work with a few producers to have music out. I was literally trying to follow the same, the same um, script of how RuPaul became famous. But for some strange reason, I've been meeting a lot of shady producers over the years. And the minute that they realize that I own the rights to my music, they try to um, not want to work with me. So three years ago, while still traveling on the road, I decided that whenever I came home, I was just going to keep concentrating on learning how to produce music, teaching myself as a young Jedi piece by piece on how to get it done. Well, as of the other day, my second track is out that I physically produced from scratch. It's called Ornatia Reads, The Fundamental Mix. It's on Apple Music. So make sure you go out and get it. If you want to support 
a queen who is not working at the current moment due to us all being home because of Miss Quarantina. Go support and get my track on iTunes Music. So please catch it. It's based on the words of episode three of Drag Race, season 12. And it's a cute little kiki. And as everybody who's heard the track, they're like, oh, this track got a lot of slap to it. I'm like, I don't know what the word, word slap means. Must be a new jargon. But it sounds like some old malarkey word that Joe, Joe Biden would say but the track has a the track has a a good little um butch queen femme queen kick to it it's a bop the kids say these days she she's very runway compatible hey vivacious who mastered this track for you uh this track was actually mastered by cynthia lee fontaine's husband slash boyfriend armando blue and so he did a wonderful job getting all the levels done right and so we're going to be collaborating on trying to get a track out from this point forward one new track out every five or six weeks true blue thank you armando so much for helping me get this done so most of your day is you're producing music you're dj and then you're also doing cameos for folks too Yes. So right now, my schedule is booked every day. I get up at 12. I set up my little spot here for what I do for DJing for um, until 7 a.m., 7 p.m. I go from noon until 7, 7 p.m. Then after that, I then have to turn around and then do cameos for like an hour or two. And then I take a like a two hour power nap. And then from that time I do the power nap, which is probably 9, 10 or 11 from the time I get back up until 6 a.m. in the morning, I am back behind the computers, either curating music for the next DJ set the next day or producing the next track that I need to continue what I'm doing because I'm also not just a DJ. I am a producer and I'm producing my own tracks. That is phenomenal. So you're actually more busy now than you ever been. Right. Well, you no, know. seven hours in a day has taken its toll, but I am devoted to the task. I am going to get up every day and get it done. I am doing it for the fans. We were all for, for one day because Facebook started to try to complain saying, oh my God, you do not own the rights to this RuPaul track. We're going to send a message to RuPaul. You can end your set now or continue. Bitch, I hit continue. So they've been throttling the amount of fans that can see me online. Um, well, when I'm, when I'm spinning. So it's not good. So we have created a Twitch page for streaming where once we get all the angles cleared up for um. We're going to be switching over to Twitch. We're going to be using Mixer. We're going to be using Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And we're going to be streaming to about five different sites simultaneously and keep the party going. Well, Vivacious, you got to pick up every stitch because it's a season of the Twitch. <laughs> yes, darling. And you can, my, my Twitch handle is Vivacious NYC. So for all of you children listening, you're all home at this time frame. So come tune on in and hear some good music that you could dance around to and bop around to while you're trying to get your day done. This this is the time of the day to get your exercise done and, and, and fix your mindsets in the process. So come on over, honey. We have enough room for you. Bring a few friends. And also while you're in the room, you can also meet other people who could then potentially be friends. Everybody that's been in my, in my room so far has made many friends with other people. Oh, it's like being in the club, like the old days. So what kind of drugs should I be taking while listening to? <laughs> Girl, the listen, good ones. The, only, um, the only bouncer who's coming to stop you is the one you let into your house. So mm. do whatever you do. In Chicago, there are cutouts everywhere of Mayor Lori Lightfoot telling people, stay home. I think um, yesterday, while we were spinning, almost every single drag race girl has stopped by to visit. Even the, um, the, the main makeup, the main um, hairstylist for RuPaul's Drag Race, Curtis Williams, he stopped by a few times. Adore Delano, you name the names, they have stopped by. Jules from Long Beach, she has stopped by. I think yesterday, Goldie Hawn stopped in. Girl! Oh. Your apartment's turned into Studio 64. Yes. Yes. I think she stopped in yesterday. You socked it to her. 
And then she's like, she's like, I love this. She's like, I love the positive message that you're, you're putting out in terms of motivating people in a time when, you know, it's a crisis for some. There are many people who haven't wrapped their heads around this whole thing yet that, oh, my God, my livelihood is in jeopardy, oh, you know. And so they're trying to figure out how to move forward, you know. Oh, yeah. Saturday Night Live last night looked like it was all done on YouTube. A lot of people have not, adopt, have not adapted a mindset yet on how to deal with this. They are the, the two biggest commodities right now that are the hardest things to get, a web camera and a N95 mask. I want you to let that sink in. Mm. And don't forget toilet paper and rubbing alcohol. And rubbing alcohol. Um, yes, the three hardest. Yes, and I weights, would say yes. Honey, uh, you want to... In the past, you could get plenty of dumbbells, you know, and now you, you can't. That would take weeks and months. The to only get dumbbell out. is me. Technically speaking, you can do calisthenics and still work out because you can use your body weight against itself and come out oh, on yeah. the other side when this is done with a six pack and a body to die for. So you don't need the gym. On That's the, right. We're all going to do that. You, you just <laughs> need to know how to use your body and, and work it to its full potential if that's the case. Uh, Mark, would you like another slice of Jamaican Easter bun? I'll wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Vivacious, it's so good talking to you. Same here, my love. Same here. Thank you so much for having a lady over. Have a great Easter, and may your Quarantina Dancerina give the children life. I want you all to check out QuarantinaDanceArena.com. That's Q-U-A-R-A-N-T-I-N-A-D-A-N-C-E-R-I-N-A.com. I'll put a link. It lists all the activities that we do every single day of the week. And uh, Ornatia heads are still available by sending an email to vivaciousnyc at gmail.com. Ornatia pins are available, not Ornatia heads, because um, the stores where we would buy the Ornatia heads are now deemed closed. Uh oh. So get your Ornatia pins. Queen, you need a look. You still need a look. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Vivacious. Thank you so very much for having me. It's an honor. And to all you children out there, stay safe. Wash them hands, honey. 22 seconds, no less. Mm. Do it. Yes. Don't pick your nose. Don't pick your eyeballs. Don't stick your fingers in your mouth. Or your butt. Yeah. We actually touch our face um, a minimum of 16 times an hour and don't even subconsciously know it. Mm. Well, thank you, Vivacious. I love you. Love you, too. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, darling. Mother has departed. Oh, it's always good to catch up with the Vivacious. Yes, Vivacious lives in New York City. Uh, mm-hmm. Check her out on Instagram, Vivacious NYC. Mm-hmm. Vivacious is available where all fabulous things on the internet Get her are. music on Apple Music and book her on Cameo. Yes. She's one of the more affordable stars. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, she's like the she's val- high value yes. of, a, of a Cameo appearance. Yes. Uh, you know, Fifi O'Hara and other drag queens, they're actually just saying... Skip cameo. Just send me the money. I'll do the video for you. <laughs> I mean, because part of it is you. You know, if you, if you, I don't, I don't know how vivacious feels about this. But are you still on the line, girl? Yeah, bitch. I can hear your ass. Wait. So <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the guests, uh, like uh, the guests, don't hang up, and sometimes they do. I no, always but, make sure I don't talk bad about them. But hold on a second. So, what? so if somebody just sends you the money and says, "Hey, will you make me like a three-minute video?" You'll do that too. It don't have to go of through course. cameo. Yeah. Right. I would gladly do that. But I currently, guess what? Cameo has been trying to get me for 14 times to do it. And when this whole social isolationism thing hit, they were like, bitch, you won't be able to do another meet and greet. So if they're going to provide access and they're out there getting traffic to me on any given random day when I get up, it's more people than I even knew who were going to come in my direction and be like, hi. Can we have a cameo from you? So this is a good thing. It's it's getting you more gigs than you normally would. Sweetie, th- the money is coming in and going right into the, you know, and it's allowing that when the next rent comes around as somebody who is not working and somebody who is fully independent, at least I can send that money to pay whatever bills that needs to be paid. All right, Vivacious. So uh, get your Vivacious pins. You can communicate with Vivacious, VivaciousNYC at gmail.com, right? Yes. All right. Ornatia Reads is available on 
Apple Music. And of course, we are available, uh, Feast of Fun, wherever fine podcasts are found, which is Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Witcher, the uh, podcast directory for pagans. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to support the podcast by becoming a Plus member. And you can do that at feastoffun.com slash plus because your contribution to the show is what makes this show happen. We wouldn't be able to talk to fantastic people like Vivacious if it weren't for you and your support over the years. It means everything to us. Yes, yes. mother. We're also on Patreon at patreon.com slash feastoffun. And we have t-shirts for sale in our store at feastoffun.com slash store. So, Mark, you're going to post the uh, Easter bun recipe. Yeah. And uh, some people are going to be like, a little too late. Easter was yesterday. You can make it anytime you want to, honey. Yeah, it's it's like, good anytime It's of a year. seasonal dessert. Mm -hmm. And it's delicious. It's wonderful with molasses. It can be made by stuff you can find, that, you know, because people are buying up all the other stuff at the grocery store, but there's plenty of molasses <laughs> sitting on the shelf waiting to be used. So get yourself cooking, honey. And thank you guys so much for listening. I'm Fausto Fernos. I'm Mark Gillian. Bye bye. bye. Mother has arrived. Reading is fundamental. fundamental. Mental. Supplemental. Elemental. And essential. Fundamental. Instrumental. Developmental. And essential. Fundamental. Supplemental. Elemental. And essential. Fundamental. Instrumental. Developmental. And essential. Mother has arrived. She's reading the girls' tonoids. Mother has arrived. She's reading. She's reading. Mother has arrived. She's reading the girls' tonoids. Mother has arrived. Reading is fundamental. Mental, supplemental, elemental, and essential. Fundamental, instrumental, developmental, and essential. Fundamental, supplemental, elemental, and essential. Fundamental, instrumental, developmental, and essential. Mother has arrived. Mother has arrived. Mother has arrived. Has arrived. She's reading the girls' tonoids. Mother has arrived. She's reading. She's reading. Mental, supplemental, elemental, and essential. Fundamental, instrumental, developmental, and essential. Mother has arrived. She's reading the girls' tonoids. Mother has arrived. Reading. Fundamental. Mental.